I started in 1974, my first night, my father bought me a copy of Professor Karate Magazine. On the cover was this guy Chuck Norris doing a jump side kick. And the, the cover wasn't very compelling, but the back of the cover, Joe Lewis, famous jump side kick. 14 years old. Superman, you must be kidding me. This guy is something different. But there's a big difference. I, I mean, because in that same magazine, you saw Jeff Smith impaling Howard Jackson with a sidekick. You saw Bill Wallace numerous times get his leg sweep and then knock that guy out with a hook kick. Who does that? This freak. <laughs> <laughs> and you are a freak of good nature. <laughs> Who else could lead us all in California dreaming? <laughs> that will go down as your episode. And then we had Jeff Smith. Athletic, aggressive, determined, leads with a smile, and he will kick your butt and smile about it later, too. But then there was Joe Lewis. See, the, the cover story about Joe Lewis, but inside he'd be running with a, 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 a tennis racket, yeah, like a milk commercial or something. Just freaking weird. It, it, it's because in the world of Hollywood, in the world of stardom, there's this thing called the it factor. And in all my years, no one has ever had the it factor like Joe Lewis. It is my contention in many ways that Joe Lewis was far bigger than the sport he chose to involve himself with. And this is a guy who didn't just involve himself with it, he led it. And in many ways, he created it. He laid down a foundation that to this day we revere. I recall in Mike Anderson's magazine, headline, Joe Lewis returns to competition. 1976, because Mike Anderson created a European tour. They were gonna go fight the Europeans. Wow, Linda Lee was the publicist. And in the interview with Joe Lewis, he said this. Why did you retire for two years? I started to get embarrassed. I started to feel that the level of athleticism I was fighting and competing against was not to the level that I bring to the table. And it was below my dignity. In fact, one time I recall going into a family restaurant and hiding the karate magazine cover because I was embarrassed to be seen reading it. Uh, last year I was introduced to a guy from Canada completely non-martial arts subject named Bob Bueller by my friend Don Warner. And Bob and I talked on the phone. So it turns out Bob's a black belt. That's really interesting. Turns out Bob's an artist. That's very interesting. Turns out Bob, if you go to the NFL Canton Hall of Fame, most of the paintings in the Hall of Fame are Bob Bueller's paintings. I grew up with this man as my hero. I was blessed since the age I was 23 for him to be big brother, mentor, instructor, biggest influence in my life. I'm 50 now. Think about it. That's the majority of my adult life. Steve Sable, president of NFL Films, is also an artist. He sent a film crew to spend three days with Bob Mueller. They filmed Find Your Butt Kiss. And lo and behold, that year in New York City, against the toughest competition in two decades, Bob Mueller won an Emmy Award for Find Your Butt Kiss. Jim and Mark, move that forward a few feet, and then as soon as the light goes on, please reveal the painting we have commissioned on behalf of the ultimate tough guy, truly our hero. Forward two feet, please. Just a bit, so everybody can see it. And voila. One, two, three, there you go.
up with a way to elevate your presence. And in the presence of Mr. Anderson, of all people, and I enjoy chatting with you on the phone, <laughs> very difficult to do. Emmy award-winning artist, NFL Films, all for you, sir. Thank you.